Hi everyone, it's Elaine Hamilton from the Reiki Center and this discussion is around permission based on a comment that I got uh, on my video, can I give Reiki if my mindset isn't right? And the comment here is um, a question about not giving Reiki to another person without consent. I'm checking with myself and it doesn't feel contracted to do this. And it does, in fact, feel expansive to me. It's not that I believe I'm anyone special who can take whatever liberties I want to heal someone, but would it really be taking away from someone else to send Reiki energy without asking? To me, it feels the same as sending unconditional love. And when I get really deep and do my best to put all mental thought and concepts aside, is there really any difference between myself and the other person? The separation feels relatively illusory and just another concept. I would be so interested to learn more on this topic. So thank you so much for that question. Um, it's a good one, you know, I mean, and there isn't any firm rules around this. It's more around boundaries and respect. So even though Yes, when we get into the absolute term of universal life force, obviously we're all made of universal life force. And in a sense, there is no separation between me and between you. But we don't live in an absolute world. We live in a relative world. So in that sense, there is a difference between me and you. And we, if we met, we couldn't just merge Right. It's like we are separate beings and we do have separate energy fields and they are uh, divided by boundaries. So I think you need to be quite careful. And this is something that we love in the spiritual world, right, is to kind of blur boundaries. So it's all love and light and it's all it's all kind of open season to um abuse if we're not careful. And, you know, you see this all the time. I've been watching cult videos recently. Um, I go through phases of getting really interested in cults. <laughs> because, because I'll tell you why, because often the spiritual, um, the spiritual lessons are twisted and we twist them in such a way that it then justifies our behavior. Now, I'm not in any way like this does seem a very genuine comment. And I'm sure that the person who wrote this is is coming from a very beautiful place. So I'm not in any way saying that there's any manipulation happening or there's anything like that. Like it, it feels very genuine to me. Um, but I would really question this idea that Reiki is the same as unconditional love. Like when you send someone unconditional love, um, the it is in a sense not shifting anything for the person right so if, if i'm sending you unconditional love right now you might receive it you might not it's kind of up to you you know it's like whatever um if i'm sending you reiki right now then there is a energy that i am actually directing at you so there is a shift that happens. And so again, just get a bit of clarity around this, because if you're saying that you don't feel that Reiki makes any changes, then why are you sending Reiki in the first place? Like why, why do you do your self-practice or why would you even attempt to give Reiki to another person if you didn't believe on some level that you are initiating a shift. You're initiating a change in energy levels. So if the person is, is needing, or in your mind, needing a change in energy levels, which is why you are being um, resonant or why you're feeling you wanna send Reiki to that person in the first place, then it assumes that there's a reason why you're doing that. So just get really clear on that. Like, what is the reason that you feel it would be nice to send Reiki to somebody in the first place? Now, if you're really clear on that, then 
it would probably be along the lines of they need more energy or they need some kind of healing in your mind, in your uh, judgment, okay? And this is the difference of sending unconditional love. Like if I'm sending unconditional love to you, it's just coming, it's like just coming out of me, right? There's not an intention. And if there is an intention, then that's also something for you to notice. So is it because the person is a bit depressed? Is it because the person uh, has an illness? Is it because the person um, is going through a tough time? Right. You don't just you don't just send Reiki to everybody, right? There are specific people that I'm assuming the questioner is is feeling um that there's certain people in her life that she feels could do with some extra energy. Now, that's a beautiful thing. And the ability, our ability to offer that is also um a beautiful thing, right? So my question would be more around the why why won't you ask for consent? And that's really a key question. If you're like, oh, it's just I, I don't need to ask for consent because I feel, you know, this person is the same as me and I and the energy is just an exchange of energy. And, you know, it's kind of like I'm just doing this for the greater good or whatever. Okay, but then why wouldn't you ask for consent? And then you would probably hit the the excuses that I hear are things like, oh, well, they they don't like it or they don't believe in it or they I don't talk about Reiki or you know, something like that. So there already is an issue. So there's something in your system that is resisting uh, opening the conversation to your ability to send Reiki or your ability to help somebody with their energy field or to inject more energy into their energy field. And that is the resistance that I would suggest is why you're not asking for consent. So just be clear on the agenda and just be clear on these little kind of hidden things. They're very, it's very subtle. Um, but I think overall, really um, understand or appreciate, probably a better word, appreciate that when you send Reiki healing to somebody, you are impacting their energy field. This is not, it's not the same as unconditional love. It's you are impacting their energy field. You are, you are sending something that is a tangible, energetic um, gift, or it's a tangible, energetic shift that creates change. So it, energy allows the body to do work. It allows the body to um, have an injection of fuel so that it can make shifts. Now, you might then say, well, what's the problem with that? Because that's going to be a good thing. But that's a very judgmental thing. Like people have the right to choose whether they're going to do the work or not, right? It's not for you. And that's where I'm like, it's not for you to decide whether uh, the person wants to do the inner work or should do the inner work or is capable of doing the inner work. And you kind of dump a whole bunch of energy into their system without their permission. Um, that to me is just not okay. It's just a boundary thing. Like you're basically invading their boundaries and it just feels kind of off to me. And I don't think it matters how much I know the person is essentially the same as me. They're not. In this situation, they're not because they have like a boundary, which is different from mine. Like if I go up to them, I'm going to bump into them. I'm not going to merge through them. Like it is a real tangible boundary. And so it's a little bit, a little bit trite 
I think, to say, well, we're all one because we're clearly not all one, right? We have very different experiences and um, it's it's kind of not, I don't know, just doesn't feel like the right thing to do. And so again, it just comes down to your own definition. What do you think Reiki's doing here? Uh, why are you sending Reiki? If you just think it's the same as universal love, then why not just send universal love? Um, you know, good wishes, but even things like prayer, you know, I would hope that if someone was praying for me, that they would tell me because prayer is quite a specific, uh, request as well. And so I don't know. I mean, I, I would hope that if people are so-called doing things for me, they would have the courtesy of letting me know so that at least I have a choice to say yes or no, you know, um, I think we've all been in situations where we felt our boundaries have been overstepped or people have ignored our boundaries or people have just disrespected them and just assumed that they could do things for us without asking us. And it doesn't feel very good. So I don't really see why you would want to do that to another person. Um, if you respect somebody else's growth and you ex and you respect their journey and you feel that Reiki might help them, then have a conversation about it. And if they're open to it, then that openness plus you sending Reiki to them at designated times where they are open and available to receive it, that's going to create a much better healing environment than just sneakily behind their back, <laughs> dumping a whole bunch of energy on them and kind of hoping for the best. Um, because some people really do feel it. Like when people, in, when people send me Reiki, um, I feel it. And I've had people that have sent Reiki to people and they get hot flushes and they get, they get agitations and they get releases you know, you're sending Reiki to someone and they start crying randomly and they don't know why. These can be kind of nerve wracking things. I'm not like, why would you do that to somebody? So I think you just, again, also have to appreciate that maybe Reiki for you just feels like unconditional love and you haven't had any big shifts or, or maybe as you're working with Reiki, you don't even feel it very much. But that doesn't mean that's the same for everybody. Some people really do feel a Reiki send very strongly. Some people really do feel the movement of energy as it gets pushed into their system. And it can be quite alarming if you don't know what's going on. Um, and it can also cause them to go to the doctor and and start taking medication for something that is just a Reiki treatment. <laughs> that would be awful, right? <laughs> and that's on you. That's on you because you're not telling people what you're doing. So, um, yeah, I would just say, just be respectful for the energy. Like this is just, it's, it's not nothing. We're, we're, we're moving, we're moving energy and it has an impact and some people feel it and some people release and some people detox, some people get all kinds of symptoms through a Reiki send and not all of them are pleasant. So it's kind of good to know when it's hitting you because then you can make sense of it. Um, so that's kind of lots of, lots of different reasons really, but ov overall to me, it's a respect for somebody else's journey and for somebody else's, um, Like just letting people make choices, right? And allowing people to, to, um, yeah. Allowing people to what? Just allowing people to live their life. <laughs> let them be. Just let them be. <laughs> Stop meddling. <laughs> and, and ultimately, you know, it's like, you never know. It might open up a whole different conversation. If you chat with someone and say, oh, I've got Reiki. Do you want me to send you some? 
and, and just give them the choice so that they can say yes or no. Um, so I am, I am and always will be a very strong advocate for permission. Um, I think it's a simple respect thing. And I also know over my many years with Reiki that Reiki has a lot of unpredictable results. And so you go willy nilly sending Reiki here, there and everywhere. Um, and you really cannot predict the impact it's going to have on that person. And then the confusion of that impact on a person who doesn't realize that you are meddling with their energy field. It just feels pretty obvious to me that you would always let people know what you're doing. Um, anyway, that's just my two cents worth. And maybe it just gives you some food for thought. I would say, why won't you ask for consent rather than why do you need consent? Like sh shift the question, turn it around on its head. Um, like, why aren't you asking? Um, that would probably give you some insights as to what any hidden agendas are there. Uh, and so if you've got people that are just not open to it, then, you know, respect that. It, people don't have to be open the same way you're open. And you're probably not open the same way they're open. You know, it's like we all have different resonances. So also trust if people don't resonate with Reiki, there's a reason for it. Why, why should they resonate with Reiki? They resonate with other stuff. Maybe they resonate with, you know, medicine and that, that works for them. So, so what, I mean, who's to say that, uh, the way we do things is the right way. It's the right way for us. That's why we do it. Right. But it doesn't make it the right way for everybody. Clearly, there's no right way for everybody. So everyone finds their own journey. Everyone finds their own way. And just mind your own business and do your thing and resonate with what resonates with you. And by all means, share it and talk about it and offer it. Absolutely. You know, that's that's beautiful. Um, but just really take care with this. It's a very slippery slope. That's all I'm going to say. It's a very slippery slope from, from kind of blurring the lines of personal boundaries. So there's a, there are personal boundaries, clearly. Like I know in quantum mechanics, like if we're going into the whole uh, separation, there is no separation. Like if you're going deep into that, then I should be able to just stick my hand through the wall because it's all just energy. Ultimately, it is all just energy. But I'm telling you, I won't be able to stick my hand through the wall. It will hurt if I try. And if I come up against another person, no matter no matter how deep I am in meditation with the person sitting next to me, and I might feel completely expanded, I can't physically merge with the person. And I can't physically merge with the wall. So there are physical energetic boundaries. And don't get those too confused, right? and Reiki impacts all the different levels. So sure, at the level of universal life force, it's all Reiki. But then as you come up into the physical vibrations of the energy, Reiki is going to impact that physical, emotional, and mental layers of an individual person. And it's going to impact them in very profound and real ways. So it's not like universal love. It's not like unconditional love. It's not, it's not the same thing. It's really not the same thing. And you can experiment with this. If you don't believe me, you know, just stop doing your own Reiki treatment and just send yourself universal love, um, unconditional love, and see if it's different. Try and heal your finger with <laughs> try, try and feel heal your finger when you next cut it with unconditional love. It's different. It's different. It's not the same thing. So um, at the level we're talking about, and at this level, we're talking about deliberately sending Reiki to somebody, uh, tuning into that person's energy and deliberately asking Reiki to flow into that person's energy field. That is a thing. And that thing has an impact and that impact needs to be discussed with consent. Feels pretty obvious to me, but 
feel into it for yourself, obviously, just my two cents worth. And maybe that's just helped a little bit with that question. Okay, thanks so much. See you next time. Bye.